And a lot of these projects come about too from when we're working on other things and thinking about, you know, even from the, the kind of hill house and, and ways of, of, of just living to even then something like the, the sleeping cottage and uh, floating house, which are two separate projects. Um, the sleeping cottage is the first project we did for a client and the site is in about three hours north of Toronto in the Georgian Bay. Um, on a, a very small island, granite island. It's an amazing landscape, um, uh, and it's in the shape of a U. So not only is the, the location pretty radically different than anything we've ever you know, visited or experienced before, but then also just the, the kind of strangeness of the actual site. Uh, so, and we've had a couple projects like this where we start with one small thing. Um, uh, some projects are much smaller than this even, but just as a kind of test. Um, and then we've been very fortunate to have the clients kind of ask us back to do a sort of second, a second thing for them. So uh, kind of looking at the small um, kind of guest cottage, sleeping cottage, um, <clears throat> there's very strict zoning requirements and uh, just, just trying to look at the, this kind of weekend uh, yeah. place for them. Uh, that's, that's only, um, it, it actually freezes starting in October till about April, so it's really only in the summer that they can use this. A part of the problem with this is, um, is also this winterizing, which is uh, the terminology they use, winterizing the, the cottage. So how to easily do it with these large sliding panels which cover up all the openings. Um, again, this is a project I would say like the first project where the client really wasn't, it was a strange, it was a project we got through a wrong number, <laughs> really. And so the, the client had called looking for somebody else and <laughs> And said, "Oh, I said, you know, can you do? Uh, you know, we're looking for somebody who did houses in that area, who taught somewhere in Toronto, and, and they were just calling around, yeah. and on the lake. Mm -hmm. And we were like, yeah, of course, we can do this, you know, and um, and just hit it off with the client, and then and then the client proceeded to torture us with images of like cottages that were horrendous, and then we got Cottage fired, life. and then got rehired again, and then and then, but." Eventually, when it was done, the last project they they called up and I remember uh, getting a message on my phone because at that point I don't think I was answering their calls. Um, <laughs> something that said like it's nicer than the nicest hotel we've been in, which was like an insult <laughs> to me. <laughs> so, but in the end, um, they you know they they called us back and we met with them to do the second part. It's a series of of projects that, that we worked on a master plan with them on around this island. So this is the sort of U-shaped here, you can see, which is so cool for an island to be a U-shape because islands you never think of as having an interior space, really. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we came up with a system that would kind of link everything together, sort of this necklace of, of pavilions around here and with two in landscapes with two paths, one that was kind of on a ridge line always looking out and then one that was always looking in and sort of weaving around. And this is, the, it's a series of five buildings, and the first one was this, and this is the second one, which was completed last uh, summer, spring, which was, it's called the floating house, and it's kind of the bridge between the two sides. Um, which also allows for, you know, the, the idea that they can bring guests, it's very uh, family oriented, uh, you know, many generations sort of living in this area coming up in the summers, but also that they could invite guests that might also have a kind of privacy so that they could kind of slip through without ever having to go inside the boathouse, for example, upstairs, um, and, and just kind of really feel sort of that they have some privacy, even though it's all very visually accessible. So this is the path, one of the paths that comes down here, goes through, can you see my hand, by the way, on the computer? Okay, <laughs> then, then go across here to this other side. So um, this is kind of the beginning of it, which is, which is also the best parts you never see in buildings sometimes. And the, the, this is working with these, I mean, this is really working with uh, contractors, I would say your worst nightmare of contractors. Um, who, you know, you, I have to pretend like I know something about hockey and um, bear hunting and moose hunting. I mean, it's just the worst, the, the worst, right? I mean, I just, I, I'd have to, I am actually part Canadian, so I could try to, I could fake it a little bit. But the, um, um, and the first part, 
um, of the actually the, the the best people on the project were these guys who made this, and they were all parametric. They're in the middle of the woods and nowhere, but they're using SolidWorks and doing parametric modeling for everything. And, and they first-rate sort of steel fabricators to produce this crazy s steel pontoon system, which is the the basis for the whole project. And the project is on Lake Huron, and um, it really did float its way all over that lake. So it started in one part of the lake, floated to another part. In the wintertime, froze. The contractors worked on the ice over there. And then when it was done, it was shipped out to the float out to the site. It was like this Aldo Rossi thing that was unexpected. Um, it's in part because of the conditions, like I was saying before, kind of dealing with extreme weather. So no one actually occupies it during the winter. But uh, there was a previous structure here that uh, just couldn't survive the, the kind of freeze and thaw and the, the current underneath. So uh, we had to re-examine how we were going to actually build a kind of boathouse and uh, attach it back to, to the land. So uh, there's actually then a kind of system of bubblers so, there, so it, the water doesn't actually freeze immediately around it. But, but in theory, you could sort of unhook it and uh, potentially float it around, I suppose. The, one of the, the major problems the, that w they've had is that with global warming, actually, the lake levels have dropped. This is why we were floating. Yeah. That's why the other, there was a project here that was like a, an old, from the 1800s, like a house, basically. That with living quarters uh, in it, which is why we could get this grandfathered in, because it's again, it's not a, normally allowed. Um, but with global warming, the lake levels have dropped so radically. There was a big piece in the New York Times about a year ago on this, um, and how this has affected shipping and everything and industries in the in the lake. But um, this was our sort of solution to that, so that this thing could move around with the around the island. So there's a few spots it could dock into. And as, as part of some of the things we do is, is yeah, yeah, just talk a little bit about this. We like to uh, make a lot of models, but really using kind of 3D prints as of late is sort of everything we're doing. This is a big model. It's uh, kind of about four feet. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not really an exaggeration that the contractors were difficult to work with. It's just a matter of they didn't have the kind of experience with this kind of project. And so one of the things we did was fabricate this model and uh, take it to them and sort of left it on site. And they, they actually used it in, in helping them because it never really looked at the drawings. No, they so never it was, looked a, at it was pretty drawings. amazing. Do contractors and, and we, ever look at drawings? <laughs> do you guys know? And really? We, and we also were able to, with the use of our website and getting them to take you know, sort of digital yeah. photos that we, we really, we were both in uh, Cambridge and New Haven and uh, so we really had the project built uh, during the winter time and uh, through through the internet because there was no way for us to even go visit. We traveled a few times, but most of the time, yeah, we had yeah, to train them to be diligent in summer. taking photos and so they were actually, in, in that regard, they were quite good and sort of decent to work with. Um, more pictures. You can see the old, the f original uh, sleeping cottage. This one, there's a sort of play on type. They're all sort of the same. The, the, the master plan is of all the buildings are all the same, but they all change and shift as they move around in different locations. The brain screen system, this is a double layer, like the, you also realize you just invent things and you sort of have to fake it. Like I would, the roof, roofing thing, which I thought, um, I would just say, like act like it, it was a normal thing. The contractors, I would just say, oh, it's a cedar plank roofing system. And you know, it's like, well, you know, everybody does this. And, um, <laughs> but um, it was kind of interesting how that worked out. I think one of the things that that we did that I think I'm the happiest about with these projects are, is the rain screen systems that we developed here so that, um, you know, there's a rubber membrane underneath this, this and then there's a one inch airspace and then the cedar on top of it. And it really does perform quite well in sort of reducing the heat gain because there's very strong winds. So a lot of the heat that you normally, which there's no air conditioning in any of these projects, um, does get removed. A lot of it, so it's an interior, little product placement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And I think also part of, you know, so again, the idea of going back to these sort of experiments, um, we were just really, in a way, you know, just starting, you feel like any chance you have to make something, you, you, we kind of go for it. And that included um, some earlier images of a kind of wood uh, a bathtub and sink, and then also these porcelain tiles. And we worked with an artist from Troy, New York to fabricate them. So we just really push as much as we can and just really being uh, kind of relentless uh, in, in the work and in what we, can, what we can do and try. I think that's the best way to describe us as relentless. I think that's what Bob Dylan said too. If you ask him like, wh how do you become whatever successful? I think he was, that's what he said, it's just, tr it's just about being relentless.